G'day and salutations. Today's briefing, China's rocket force, capabilities and targets. How do its weapons compare to the Atakams and Iskander? Land-based rockets and missiles with conventional warheads have for some time been a significant capability. And not only at the tactical and operational level, but also the strategic. The PLA has long sought to develop this capability augmenting air and sea launch strike capabilities. Amongst the major PLA reforms of 2015 was the establishment of the PLA Rocket Force, previously the Second Artillery Force, as a service on par with the Army or the Ground Force, Navy and Air Force. The PLA Rocket Force, with a strength of around 120,000 personnel, controls the PLA's land-based missiles that can have both conventional and nuclear roles and includes both ballistic and cruise missiles. Ballistic missiles are classified by their range as follows. SRBMs, short range ballistic missiles with a range of 70 to 1000 kilometers or 43 to 620 miles. MRBMs, medium range ballistic missiles with a range of 1000 to 3000 kilometers or 620 to 1860 miles. IRBMs, intermediate range ballistic missiles with a range of 3,000 to 5,500 kilometers, so 1,860 to 3,400 miles. And ICBMs, intercontinental ballistic missiles with ranges over 5,500 kilometers or more than 3,400 miles. What missile systems does the PLA rocket force employ and how are they organized? This briefing will examine the PLA Rocket Force's conventionally capable IRBMs, MRBMs, SRBMs and Ground Launch Cruise Missiles GLCMs, but will not address ICBMs or nuclear-only short-range systems, and also not the anti-ship ballistic missiles such as the DF-21D and DF-26B. Note the numbers are as at the end of 2023 and are largely taken from the military balance 2024. This briefing will also not cover the PLA's multiple launch rocket systems, MLRS, which are part of the PLA ground force and which are generally used in large salvos for assault preparation and counter-battery work. Viewers will be familiar with foreign MLRS systems like the Tornado, the US HIMARS and the Czech Vampire. The PLA Rocket Force's weapons sit above the Army's MLRS and have a different target set, including high value and or difficult specific targets, including critical infrastructure and for targets at greater range. Viewers may be familiar with SRBMs currently being used, such as the Iskander, which has a range of 500 kilometres, a warhead of 480 to 700 kilograms, and a missile diameter of 920 millimetres, and the Attackums, which has a range of 300 kilometres, warhead of 214 kilograms, and a missile diameter of 610 millimetres. The Attackums is to be replaced by the smaller 430 millimetre diameter, but longer ranged PRISM or Precision Strike Missile. The M142 HIMARS can launch one and the M270 MLRS, shown here in the image, can launch two attackums. Note the Iskander is a significantly larger weapon, explaining its better performance. Now the closest analogue of the attackums in Iskander in PLA service is the PHL-16, which can fire two 750mm diameter missiles out to a range of 500 kilometres. But these are not part of the rocket force. We'll start with the export M20 SRBM, which may or may not be in service with the rocket force as the DF-12. Some sources say it is in service and others say no, but I'm yet to see a confirmed image of one in PLA markings. If it is in service with the rocket force, the DF-12 will likely have better performance than the M20 as it would not have MTCR restrictions and likely have a range of around 400 kilometers with a 400 kilogram warhead. Certainly its twin missile launch layout would be useful and it would be broadly equivalent to the Iskander. 
But why would the PLA need it when they have the PHL-16, as mentioned earlier, which would appear to already have very similar performance? What is in service, and since around 1990, is the DF-15, which has a range of between 600 to 900 kilometres with a 500 to 750 kilogram warhead. There are approximately 80 in service. These are joined by the DF-11s, which have a range of up to 825 kilometres with a 500 kilogram warhead. Entering service around 1992, there are currently about 108 in inventory. The most recent addition to the SRBM systems is the DF-16, which has a range of over 800 kilometres with a warhead of between 500 to 1,000 kilograms. Entering service around 2012, there are about 36 in service. Together, these give a total of over 200 SRBM launches with around 600 missiles. Moving to MRBMs, the DF-21 has been in service since around 2006 and has been employed in straight nuclear roles, conventional land strike roles, and as an anti-ship ballistic missile. The conventional land strike version has a range of over 2,000 kilometres with a 600 kilogram warhead. There are still around 30 in service. The conventional DF-21s are being replaced by the DF-17, which appears to combine a DF-16-like rocket booster with a hypersonic glide vehicle. These are believed to have a range of around 2,500 kilometres and is thought there are around 48 in service. Perhaps the most interesting of the PLA's long-range missiles are the IRBMs. A relatively new addition to the PLA rocket force is the DF-26. It is a range of around 4,000 kilometres with a variable warhead of around 1,500 kilograms. There are approximately 140 in service. What is at least an IRBM and possibly an ICBM is the DF-27. Likely based on the booster of the DF-26, the DF-27 employs a hypersonic glide vehicle instead of the traditional re-entry body. Most sources give a range of at least 5,000 kilometres, with some suggesting as far as 8,000 kilometres or 5,000 miles, which would make it an ICBM. These have only recently begun entering service. As mentioned earlier, the PLA Rocket Force also employs ground launch cruise missiles, or GLCMs. These include the CJ, or DF-10, long-range subsonic cruise missile, which is mounted in threes on a TEL vehicle and has a range of around 1,500 kilometres. There are around 72 in service. And the DF-100 long-range supersonic cruise missile, which has a range of around 2,000 kilometres, with around 54 in service. So the PLA Rocket Force's inventory of conventional and or dual use launches includes, in rough numbers, 80 DF-15, 108 DF-11 and 36 DF-16 short range ballistic missiles, SRBMs, 30 DF-21 and 48 DF-17 medium-range ballistic missiles, MRBMs, 140 DF-26 and an unknown number of just entering service DF-27s, which have hypersonic glide vehicles, as intermediate-range ballistic missiles, IRBMs, and 72 DF-10 and 54 DF-100 ground launch cruise missiles, or GLCMs. So where can these missiles range out to? Well, this map displays the ranges of selected missiles from Chinese soil. Note, this also includes examples of air launch weapons which we're not discussing today. The SRBMs can cover Taiwan, the Korean Peninsula, around half of India, and parts of Japan, the Philippines, and the South China Sea. The MRBMs uh, continue this coverage to all of Japan, the Philippines, the South China Sea, and India. 
The DF-26 IRBM then adds the islands of Palau and Guam to this list. Now, if the hypersonic glide vehicle equipped DF-27 has a range of at least 5,000 kilometres or 3,100 miles, then the northern Australian city of Darwin, which is a major naval and army base, the UK-US facility at Diego Garcia in the Indian Ocean, Australia's major northern air base at Catherine, just south of Darwin, and the US city of Anchorage in Alaska would also be within range. If it has a range of 8,000 kilometres or around 5,000 miles, then Honolulu and Hawaii and all of Australia could be targeted by this conventionally armed hypersonic weapon. Finally, looking at organisation. The PLA Rocket Force is organised into six missile bases and three supporting bases. The missile bases are Base 65, focusing on the Korean Peninsula and Japan, Base 61, focusing on Taiwan, Base 62, focusing on the southern area, Base 63, focusing on Taiwan and the southern area, and Bases 64 and 66, which focus on long-range nuclear forces. These bases have at least six missile brigades each, with a total of around 39 missile brigades, including the nuclear-only brigades. In summary, the Pillay Rocket Force has access to a wide spectrum of long-range, conventionally armed, road mobile systems. What is not clear is how the Rocket Force's conventionally armed missile units coordinate with the Joint Theatre Commands, and in particular the Ground Force's group armies and their multiple launch rocket systems. Might we see some of the Rocket Force systems deployed within the artillery brigades of the Ground Force's group armies, giving them a deeper strike capability? Regardless, these systems offer significant strike capabilities beyond Taiwan and Korean Peninsula scenarios, as the ranges of the MRBMs and IRBMs show. These missiles have the range to hit deep launch sites and critical rear area logistics, command and communications targets. Being road mobile and operating from within China itself makes them significantly more survivable and therefore harder to neutralise than air or sea platforms launching missiles with similar ranges. And not only are the TELs more difficult to neutralise, but the hypersonic glide vehicles launched by the DF-17s and 27s are far more difficult to destroy. Is there an effective defence against such a capability? And even if there is, there will always be leakers. That concludes today's briefing. Thank you for watching. Happy to take suggestions for future briefings from subscribers, so please subscribe, like, and share. Until next time, Vale de Cerro.